Are you gonna tell everybody welcome to Apple Wedge's homestead? Huh? You are? They wanna see the Silky Chalet and see how everybody's doing. Let's show them, baby doll. Let's show them. <laughs> over there. You've made a mess of yourself and of my feed. What are you doing? Have you missed everybody? I bet they've missed you. Thomas. Holy moly, we have been pounded by rain today. This is exactly what happens in the fall here in East Tennessee. It's gonna get cool, cool, cool as well. I know a lot of you have wanted to see an update on the Silky Chalet and what all is happening here. It's a little loud, but welcome to the farm. So I chose to keep the Silky Chalet just as you have seen it before because we have had several rounds of babies that have been hatched by mamas. And so my Silky Chalet is cut in half. And what I've done is I keep the mamas that are hatching babies and the new babies and all of that over on the far side so mamas and babies stay over here. There's no, no hassle with them. They can't get over. Now some of the older birds can hop over. My issue for doing this in this situation is not because I'm trying to keep the babies of mamas away from the other silkies or the few little bantams that I have. And I have a duck in here now too. But the reason being is because I don't want them going outside. They're so little. A lot of you that raise silkies or bantams and whatnots, even as they are, you know, growing little chicks, they're so small, okay? They're so little that they can literally get through my fencing out here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see right here, as I was talking about with my netting or my wiring, I don't want babies to get out. Little bantams and little silky babies, even at, not even at the full grown stage, can squeeze through this. That is why I also have this up, so they can't squeeze underneath the door. So you do have to make adjustments for all your sweethearts. So my pretty run over here with fresh straw and shavings and all this stuff, as you can see, just in the past couple of hours, the rain took it down, baby. So I wanted to film the video anyway, because this is real life. This is, you know, something you can't avoid, but silkies have to have as clean as possible of a run and as clean and as dry as possible as a coop, as every chicken should, but because Silkies tend to be more natured in terms of keeping it low to the ground. They can get really dirty really quick. They have an extra toe. They have all this extra situation in terms of all the uh, light feathering. So it really becomes an issue. You have to really watch that. I have one girl who's got a little mud clump on one of her toes. We got to get that off. That's something that I posted on Facebook this week. I've had one or two girls in my regular run and now I've got a silky, she's got a, like a, a dirt dauber <laughs> clung onto one of her toes and you don't want that. So I'm simply going to remove that to make sure we're taken care of there. But we have a great run here and we have a new addition to the run. He is my fierce gossamer. He's one of my oldest roosters and he is the protector y'all. Hey, I'm telling you, he is fierce. So I'm going to film from this angle real quick. So you can see we put the duck, the large white duck in with the silkies. I had two, one of them didn't make it. Oh, you gotta say something, honey. Did not make it and they're so big and they're so heavy that I did not want the, uh, the sweetheart to have any competition in terms of space and feed and getting in and out of the coop or run or whatnot due to a number of birds. So I chose to put this duck in here and we just love it and so far so good. All right, so let's talk about silkies for just a second. I love my silkies. I have said that even as, you know, I age with grace, 
And if I choose to downsize my homestead, first of all, I will always have chickens. And if I only have one breed, it will definitely be silkies. They are incredible, uh, just incredible to have on a farm. Okay, so I put a little extra feed down. See, this side right here is supposed to go be going outside to eat. But I haven't fed them out in the run yet. As you saw, there's water because of the rain. I did feed the babies over here. They've already drank all their water, so they're hungry. I'm feeding and watering right now, so you're in the midst of doing that with me. But I put a little food down just to kind of distract them so they don't hop out on my feet here. Silkies are great to have on the farm, y'all, and they're wonderful for children. <laughs> Overall, they're very gentle to have. I have the one rooster who's a little protective, so understand that it can happen, but he's just doing his job. So just know that that's part of it. Um, I do have to say that I really like having the silkies separate from the other chickens. I've always tried to keep my silkies a little bit separate simply because they just need ex a little extra care. They're just different. They don't roost. Um, they have a totally different situation in terms of having a different, uh, you know, separate and extra toe. They're just a totally different bird. Now I do have in here, as you know, I have Miss Scarlet. She is one of my oldest, oldest hens. She is uh, missing one eye. So she, you know, she's very gentle she does well with the silkies i'm gonna get you baby i know you're thirsty um and then i have, of course have the bantams now i have taken my other favorite little bird little cutie tootie danny devito who is so tiny he's like a toy chicken i have totally separated him why here, pumpkins, I know you're thirsty, darlings. I can't let you not have fresh water and I sit here and talk. Oh, look at those babies. Come over here and get your sips. Good job. Good job, y'all. See what I'm talking about? Just baby dolls. Get your booty back up there. Get your booty, girlfriend, get your booty back in there. You crazy girls. Crazy. So they do like to come out in free range. They do that often. In the mornings, I let them come out and whichever ones want to come out and sort of free range the area. I do that, you know, for quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of time, but it is a managed situation. I watch them. We have not had any issues. I shouldn't say this. Lord, I shouldn't say it, but they have not, we have not had any issues <laughs> with any predators. But to make it short and sweet, I did have to make the decision to take Danny DeVito and completely separate him for now. He's in a large cage. He visits with the quail. He's next to the rabbits and he's up there with Cochise who loves him to death. So I had to make a decision because we're going into fall and winter. We're in fall, we're going into winter, very cold weather. He doesn't get along in here very well. He is just not accepted. I think had he been a hen, it would not have been an issue but he is a rooster that's grown coming in out of nowhere and i just didn't feel like going through the whole idea right now in the winter time in the cold months trying to acclimate him we're going to approach that and think about that as it gets warmer in the spring things are always changing on your farm folks i mean what you're seeing me do today may not be what i'm necessarily doing tomorrow you have to learn to adjust um, ex have extra cages, be able to make quick decisions. And really it's just to have everybody get along and be healthy and do what's best overall at that time for the bird. Another reason that it is a wise decision also to keep your babies separated with their mamas from the other birds is because you're also going to be feeding a different feed for those babies. Now you can do this. You can do, a lot of people do this. They just go ahead, if they've got babies in with their flocks, they will go ahead and feed the whole flock the baby food. I actually feed my babies, my quail and all my babies. I feed them a, now I feed them a Tucker Milling feed. It's a 28%. It's a very high protein. It's actually for quail and for turkey. Uh, for the poults and it is for them, but you can also feed it to baby chicks. They love it So I'm just giving it to all the mamas and babies in there. The mamas can eat the baby stuff Okay, I'm gonna keep this real simple. They can eat that you don't want Small birds baby chicks and pullets whatnot really getting into layer feed until they're at least about 18 weeks old. We're not there yet
All right, guys, so far, so good. I'm gonna finish up with the feeding for the afternoon. Make sure everybody is tucked away for the evening. We appreciate you following along here at Appalachia's Homestead. I'm not gonna hatch any more babies right now. That's what we all tell ourselves, right? <laughs> That's right. We'll see you on the next video.